Welcome back into Nothing But Net. Let's give the Wolfpack some love because Wes Moore and his team have been stellar since he got there in 2013. They've won two consecutive ACC tournament titles, something they hadn't done in school history. In fact, before he arrived, they'd only won four all time. But it doesn't stop there. He's also taken the Wolf back to five NCAA tournaments. The first trip back in 2014, he became the first coach in women's history to advance three different teams to the NCAA tournament. And more of the same this season. This year marks his seventh 20-win season, already the second most in NC State history. His winning percentage there, almost 76%, is the highest in NC State history. A lot of good things happening for Wes Moore and the Wolfpack. And, Coach, I want to come to you first on this because to build a program that has that much sustained success year after year, what does it take to do something like that? Well, it's all about recruiting. And it's not that you're getting the All-Americans. It's that you're getting the right fit for your culture. And they have a great culture there. He does a terrific job. I think he's one of the best coaches in the conference. And the reason is he's not getting all those All-Americans. He's getting kids that are unranked in the top 100. And he's making them better. He's putting it all together. I think he's doing a masterful job. Two of their starters weren't even top 100 recruits in Kayla Jones and Raina Perez. He's done a really good job, too, of picking his spots to go to the portal. Diamond Johnson bringing her off the bench and Raina Perez, a huge addition from the portal. Yeah, I agree. I think you touched on something, Coach, is the culture. Like, you win and lose championships based off your culture. If you have a great culture, I think that's where you take the next level. And, and like you said, recruiting, you're recruiting people, and now you have this sustained um, schedule the sustained play because people trust you and you, and you created that balance within your program. Yeah, and it happens in the locker room. And when you have the kind of seniors that yeah. they have, you can trust your culture. And you know what hel else helps the culture? What else helps the recruiting? Winning helps mm. all of that. And that is certainly something that NC State has figured out a way to do, not just this year, but years in the past. They've clinched a share of the ACC regular season title again this year. And you take a look at the best win percentage by major conference teams. 88% for the Wolfpack over the last three seasons, one of the top four in the country. And now we welcome in one of the players who has been a key part of their success, especially the last couple of years, Elisa Kunain, one of the best to do it. Elisa, you know, we're just talking about how NC State has continued to build year after year and, and how they become one of the powerhouses. Curious about your recruiting process, how you got there. I know you're close to home and, and Coach McGraw was wondering, you know, maybe <laughs> no, no green was ever in your future. Anything there? <laughs> I mean, I think she might have missed out on that one, but I'm happy to rock the red. <laughs> one of the many recruiting mistakes in my career, I would have to say. But, hey, you know, we've been talking about post-play, how physical it is down there. And you know those guards out front, a little touch, it's a foul. Meanwhile, you're getting beat up inside. How, how have you prepared yourself for how physical the game is? You know, I just have to know it's going to be tough, um, and especially coming in, knowing I'm at the top of everyone's scouting reports. I just know they're going to be coming for me, so I just have to be mentally calm and collected and just take the hits and give them out when I can. Um, just stay calm. Elisa, talking about post play, on Sunday you guys are facing Virginia Tech. We all know about you and Liz Kitley. You're from the same hometown. You grew up playing ball together. What is it like? What is it really like playing against one of your best friends and battling down low? Honestly, when we first started playing against each other in high school and maybe even the first year of college, it was just kind of like giggly. Um, but I think now it's been so serious now that we're on this type of level. Um, and so I think just coming into it, knowing that it's just another player at the end of the day, um, and we'll give our little smiles at jump ball, and then we're ready to battle it out. How do you feel about how you've improved from the start of this year to now about to enter into the ACC tournament? I just think our team has grown a lot as a whole. And I think personally, just keep on watching film. Um, like last Virginia Tech game, I know I didn't finish as well as I wanted to. So sitting down, looking at that film, seeing how I can finish my shots better, um, just being more physical, knowing my counter moves, I think, and just taking notes from all the games that I've had. You know, when you're a really good team at the top and then you only beat somebody by 10 and, and it seems like nobody's ever happy, you didn't win by enough. You guys have come out and not played particularly well at the beginning of games. You finished, you've, you've got the W's. What do you say to your detractors when they're always saying that, you know, you're not, you're not doing enough? 
honestly, I think we feel it when we come out of a game and we didn't play our best in the first half or the first quarter and we can feel ourselves getting down, not really having momentum. I think we're at our best when we come out in the first quarter and first half and start well. But at the end of the day, Coach Moroy says it might be an ugly baby, but it's our baby. And <laughs> wins in the ACC are hard to come by, especially at this time of the year, especially on the road. So we're going to take the win, learn our lessons from it and move on. Elisa, that sounds like a Coach Moore Southern <laughs> saying that you just kind of are like, what? Can you give me a few other of Coach Moore's sayings where you just don't even know what he's saying because he's so Southern? I love that part about him. <laughs> Honestly, they're hard to come up with off the top of my head. I think that's a main one, though. I think he's just goofy all around. Like, I remember we were in practice the other day and he started yelling at somebody and then turned around and was singing like a tune that he had in his head, like spinning in <laughs> a circle. And we were all just like, what is wrong with this man? But it keeps him balanced. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what that last one you said was. I'm going to go back and listen to it again and write it down. It's an and, ugly and, baby, Kels. <laughs> But, but it's, it's all ours. gravy? Oh, I thought no, she said something about all gravy. Okay, that would be really sad. <laughs> all gravy, baby. We will see if it is all gravy after this Virginia Tech game. You guys control your own destiny. Already locked at least a share of the title in and, and looking to clinch even more. So I know that's the position you guys want to be in. Elisa, we appreciate the time. Always enjoy watching you and looking forward to seeing you guys down in Greensboro. Thank you, and thanks for having me. I'm just going to take this opportunity to say bless my heart because I could not hear what <laughs> she your said heart, there. Kel. Lisa Kunain and as we mentioned, her her friend Elizabeth Kitney, Kitley, certainly front runners for ACC Player of the Year. Kitley's been a dominant force. She ranks the top two in ACC in points, rebounds, double doubles, field goals percentage, and blocks. And Kunain's stats, well may not always blow you away, but she is the anchor for the best team in the ACC. Two of the best to do it. Going to have a conversation about who should be ACC Player of the Year. Cannot wait to see that game coming your way Sunday, Coach. And you take a look at these two. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what lies ahead for them because mentioned this season, Kaylee's numbers may have been a little bit better when they go head to head. It's Kunain that's had the edge. So want to talk about player of the year because as the season winds down, everybody's voting on who's going to be the player of the year. So state your case right now, Kelly. I'm coming to you first. Who's I wonder, your I wonder. ACC <laughs> player of the year. Um, my ACC player of the year and the <laughs> ACC player of the year. So dramatic is Elizabeth, don't know her middle name, Kitley. She is the player of the year. And you can look at this a lot of ways. Sometimes we say, okay, is it the best player on the best team? Is it the most valuable player? I think both of these players are, are exceptional. Two of the best in the country. Overall, Liz Kitley is more dominant. I, that's what I'm going with here. When you look at her numbers, her blocks are, are much better than Kunain's. She's given you 20 and 10 on any given night. Her win shares are higher if we want to go advanced. So Kunain, and, and her, her production has dropped a little bit because of the players around her bringing in Diamond Johnson, but I think Liz Kitley is the player of the year. All true. Great, great stats. Mm. Uh, very good stats. But I think the thing with Kunain that I like about her, she has a better supporting cast. They don't need her to get those kind of numbers. They don't need her to be the leading scorer. She's drawing the defense. She's making it easier for her teammates to get shots. She's opening things up for them. I think that she is somebody that can score in a lot of different ways. And she said it herself. She is the feature of the scouting report. She's the best player on the best team in the league. Chelsea, I guess it's tied. One the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker. I'm going to go with Kitley. I am going to go with Kitley. <laughs> after, after, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Coach. I, I'm going to go with Kitley because what you said, she's most dominant. And I, I really like the way she, she plays. Honestly, I love the fadeaway. We talked mm. about that. But she has been dominant. You know, she's, uh, other players have stepped up with Shepard and, 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 and Amor. But they're – matching up together, Kunain wins the battle. But I think Kelly might well, have won the war. You know, I mean, you see what I'm, I'm yes, doing up there. You yes, see what I did I there? You did the war, the war of the whole season. The war for of sure. the whole season. So does it matter what happens between those two in the next game? Does I that change anything? I think for some voters, yeah. it does. Yeah, some and, voters. and you can look <laughs> at... Kelly's like, not me, because well, I already yeah, told I mean, you My mind's already made up. But they, they are playing head-to-head -head on Sunday. Yeah. And so that's kind of your final time. State your case. If you're Kunane and Kitley, state your case. Why should you be player of the year? Yeah, I might change mine Don't, and text you guys and be like... <laughs> that's oh, fair. That's oh, fair. Coach is Kunane, you know? <laughs> Sunday, 6 o'clock right here on ACC Network. Those two are key, but... 
Chelsea, it's not just them. I, I know you want to talk about the guard play and what we're going to see. And, and what does it come down to, you think, for the guards? I guess the the posts bring it up. They back it down. Yeah, they do everything, <laughs> right? They do everything. I'm just like, well, how Shoot do they the get the basketball? Does anybody out there know? But I think Reina Perez's play, Diamond Johnson's play, and then on the other side you have Georgia Amor and you have Asia Shepard. You know, they're they're raising their, their level of play going into this ACC tournament, especially for Virginia Tech. That's how they've been able to have that surge because they're shooting so well from the outside. Liz Kitley doesn't have all that pressure. If they do double team, they're able to kick it out for threes. And that's what we've been wanting Virginia Tech and wanting to see how they were going to play around Liz Kitley. I think Raina Perez is really underrated. She might be yeah. the unsung hero of that team. Even with Diamond Johnson coming in and bringing all that talent off the bench, playing them together has been really great. I like the way that Wes is working with them both. But she controls the game, and when she plays well, they win. As well as VT shoots the three, NC State is still the best three-point shooting team in this league. So Virginia Tech has to knock down shots. Shepard and Amor have to shoot the ball while Kayla King has to give you a couple threes. I, I know it's shocking, but Virginia Tech, the key is a three-point line. And yeah. Kitley, of course. But they've got to make some threes in this game. Six o'clock right here on ACC Network Sunday. Can't wait to see what the text chain between the four of us says during and after that game. It's going to be a good one, and it will determine a lot. NC State, they control their own destiny, already locked in. The top seed in the ACC, they can get sole possession of the regular season title with a win over Virginia Tech. ACC Network scoreboard quadruple header on the women's side today, and it culminates with the nightcap, the battle of the Bigs and Blacksburg. Liz Kitley second in the league in scoring tops and double-doubles against the preseason player of the year in the league, Alisa Kunane. This is a huge matchup with a lot on the line tonight, a win for Virginia Tech, and they are into the double bye as a result of UNC's win earlier, though, a loss, and Tech slides out of the top four in the ACC tournament. A lot to break down here. We got the coach, Muffin McGraw. I'm Drew Carter here in studio. Really good showdown with a lot on the line. NC State, Virginia Tech, a win for the Hokies, and they have the double bye in the ACC tournament. Reina Perez and the Wolfpack, though, have only lost once in conference play all year. We've got the preview and the keys with the coach next. The Wolfpack trying to end their regular season with only one loss on the resume as they head to Greensboro. But the real story in this one is in the post. Elisa Kanain and Elizabeth Kitley may be the top two contenders for ACC Player of the Year. You see Kitley. Averaging almost 18 points per game for the season, second in the league, but against Kanane and NC State, only 10 points a pop. Kanane has been a whole lot more successful. These two matched up in high school. Kanane joined nothing but net earlier this week to talk about it. Honestly, when we first started playing against each other in high school and maybe even the first year of college, it was just kind of like giggly. Um, but I think now it's been so serious now that we're on this type of level. Um, and so I think just coming into it, knowing that it's just another player at the end of the day, um, and we'll give our little smiles at jump ball, and then we're ready to battle it out. Not going to see a lot of giggling tonight. I think when these two match up, they definitely are the front runners for player of the year. Both really high IQ basketball players. We're going to start with Kunane. She does so many things inside, but being a great passer is something that I love in a post player. Here she's going to be able to turn opposite and see Diamond Johnson coming off the back screen and makes the perfect pass for an easy layup. At the other end, we're going to see Kitley here. She's on defense. You're going to see why she's one of the best shot blockers in the league. She has just great body control. She's very, very versatile. She's going to use her length, and what she does so well is block shots without fouling. She is really terrific and is really hard to score over. She's changing the defense for Virginia Tech with all her block shots. Both players have a lot of confidence, and you have to have that to play. But you're going to see here, Kunane is somebody that she can move around and play in different spots. She's double teamed a lot inside. So here she's going to step back to the three-point line, and this is what really separates her and makes her special. She can make the three, and that gives her that versatility that you have to guard her inside and out. But Kitley is great in the post, too. She's kind of patented the fadeaway jumper. You'll see her here against Kunane. She's got to get a little space to get this shot over because the size difference is really not much. So she's going to take the job here. She's going to go give her about five feet and with the fadeaway, and she's going to be able to make this shot. Makes it look easy. Love the fadeaway. 
But it comes down to strength in the post. When you get the ball on the side, you're going to face a double team most of the time when you're this good. Here you're going to see the double team coming to Kunaid. It's going to eventually turn into a triple team, but she can read the defense. She sees where they are, sees them coming, goes back to her left, does a great job using the backboard, and kisses it off the glass for a nice, easy shot. What Kitley does well is she lets her shooters shoot the ball because she is going to work the offensive glass. These shooters have the confidence to shoot the ball because they know Kitley's going to be inside doing the work. She puts her hip in, gets in great position, gets the offensive rebound, and this is where she really excels around the basket. Going to be a great game tonight. These two are going to battle it out, and they're going to battle it out again next week for Player of the Year. It is the perfect way to cap off the regular season in the ACC. Kitley's defense may be the most impressive thing from the opener when these two teams met, Coach. Kanane went two for 16 from the floor against Virginia Tech. What do you think she does specifically against Kanane to slow her down? Well, I think her length, for one thing. I think that, that she knows that she can block shots and that she's going to be a presence. She's getting some help. They're going to throw some double teams at both players. So I think they, they really both have to figure out a way to get around. Get great position. Really get inside. Let's look for a little bit of high-low. Maybe take it off the dribble and see if we can get by and get one of them in foul trouble. So that's what's going on down low. How about in the perimeter? We've got some great guard play happening tonight as well. What's the key out there? I think it's going to come down to the guard play, and I think Reyna Perez is going to be the difference in the game. She, to me, is so underrated. When she plays well, this team looks unbeatable. She's the one that makes them go. She's playing with Diamond Johnson. She's running the point on her own. She gets the ball to the people who need to get the ball, and she's done a great job shooting the ball. On the other side, you've got Asia Shepard. She's had a great end of the season. Uh, Georgia Amor doing a great job at the point. Those two have been shooting the ball really well. When Virginia Tech has three players in double figures they are undefeated this year so look for those Georgia Tech or the uh, Virginia Tech guards to get on fire from the three-point line that's the only way they're going to win this game we've got Amor, Shepard, Johnson, Perez, Kanane and Kitley down low it is the perfect way to cap off the ACC regular season before we head down to Greensboro for the tournament next week not only a great game we've got two of the best in the biz on the call Jen Hildreth and Kelly Gramlich have you from Blacksburg. Let's send it there right now. Well, one more to go in the ACC regular season, and tonight in Blacksburg, it is going to be special. It's about the seniors tonight. It is also about seeding and a showdown between the two front runners for ACC Player of the Year, 23 Virginia Tech hosting number three NC State. The Wolfpack have already claimed at least a share of their first ACC regular season title in 32 years. Hello, everybody. Jen Hildreth and Kelly Graham. Like, what a game this could turn out to be, Kelly. NC State could claim that regular season title outright with a win, and there is a lot on the line for Virginia Tech. There's so much on the line for the Hokies playing in their own gym. The Hokies have never earned a top four seed in the ACC tournament. They could do that tonight with a win. With a loss, they drop to the five. With a win, they secure the three because of these tiebreakers. So there is so much at stake for Virginia Tech. Pair that with Senior Day, Jen. Pair that with the ACC Player of the Year discussion. We've got a great one. Well, you talk about that player of the year. Let's get you right to it. Here's a showdown. You can cast your vote after the game. And let's start with Elisa Kinane for NC State. Kinane, one of the most polished players in the country. She has helped build this program to what it is, a senior for this Wolfpack team. She's a great finisher. She can shoot the three. She's NC State's all-time leader in made free throws. She's an excellent free throw shooter as well. And how about her childhood friend, Liz Kitley? She has a great face-up game, a killer fadeaway, an excellent rebounder. It's only Kitley and Ioka Lee in the entire country, averaging 17, 10, and more than two and a half blocks. She has been dominant this season. These two are from the same hometown. They wear the same number. They kind of have the same hair. Jen, who is the <laughs> ACC Player of the Year, and will it be decided tonight? Very well could be. And of course, the two number 33s are going to tip us off from Castle Coliseum. A tremendous crowd on hand. They have been pushing to get the crowd in here all week. Football coaches have gone online. Kenny Brooks and his staff have gone online to get the crowd in here, and they have obliged. 
Starting five for the Hokies, Georgia Amor at the point. Asia Shepard, one of the greatest shooters in ACC history, along with Kayla King, Ajana Baines, and Liz Kitley. Starting five for the NC State Wolfpack. There's really a lot of similarities when you look down the rosters for these two teams. Raina Perez, such a great point guard. Kai Crutchfield, Clutchfield so many times for the pack. Jakia Brown Turner has been playing great. Kayla Jones and Elisa Kanane in the center. First points of the game for the pack and Brown Turner. A good start for JBT. She has played really well in the last six weeks is scoring the ball a lot better. They need that offensive punch from her on the outside. The defense as Kanae reached her hand and refused to let that interior pass get to Kitley. Here goes Brown Turner again. She is just so smooth, Jen. Had 14 points, led all scorers in the first matchup between these two teams. She makes it look easy with how effortlessly she gets to the basket. Well, the other team that has a chance to claim a share of the regular season title, along with NC State Louisville, boy, did they come out on fire in their game earlier today on the road at Notre Dame. My goodness, the Cardinals with a huge win in that one. Let's see if NC State tries to make a similar statement here as the top team in the league. Brown Turner try to take a shot again. Instead, she travels, so that'll turn it over to the Hokies. And Jen, speaking of Louisville, the only way Louisville can claim a share of the ACC regular season title is if NC State loses tonight. So it feels like the entire ACC is watching this game because UNC, they know they can jump into the top four, as we discussed in the open, if Virginia Tech loses. So I feel like everyone's watching this one, Jen. <laughs> Why wouldn't you be? North well, Carolina that too. There's also a great game. <laughs> North Carolina taking care of business earlier, so they did what they needed to do. Kenny Brooks now wondering if his team will rise to the challenge. He told us this week he does not shy away from telling his team everything that's on the line. He doesn't try to hide it, doesn't try to add pressure, but he feels his team's experienced enough to handle it. Drive to the bucket, and it is good from Kayla Jones. That is a veteran move from Kayla Jones, navigating around Liz Kitley, who's second in the ACC in blocks. Does a great job of avoiding the long six foot six arm from Kitley. Here is Kitley immediately surrounded. Kayla King, Virginia Tech can really shoot the three. They have the top three, three point shooters by percentage in the ACC in their starting five. There's one on one, Kitley and Kanane. Kanane with the bucket and it's an eight nothing NC State lead. Kunane making it look easy. You really never see Kunane and Kitley guarded one-on-one -on -one throughout ACC play. They always draw double teams, but because they're guarding each other, you'll see a lot more one-on-one -on -one in this game because they can handle it because they're each so good defensively. Kitley, that's a little more what she's used to, getting banged up on the inside with a couple of different players. NC State does commit the foul. It's on Jones. They start one-on-one -on -one initially. Kayla Jones comes over and helps out a little bit because Kunain, or Kitley got that first step on Kunain, and that's a good foul. Make Virginia Tech earn their first points from the free throw line. Don't give them a layup, and Virginia Tech still struggling. Jen, I think this is where the home court can add a little pressure, because these fans, you can tell they want to explode. They want to cheer, and Virginia Tech's gotten off to a slower start. They may be feeling that pressure to perform in front of their home crowd. As you said before, Kelly, a chance for this Virginia Tech team to make some history. They have never gotten a top four seed in the ACC tournament since joining the league. Kinane thought she had it over her good friend Kitley, but Kitley stood her ground. Asia Shepard, all-time leading scorer for the Hokies, around and out. These are what we call unfriendly roles. This is supposed to be Castle Coliseum, Virginia Tech's home gym. They've had two threes rim out and a layup. Kitley, gotta be quick Great interactions. Defense. Two Great on the shot clock, Shepard has to launch. Wolfpack making it tough on Kenny Brooks' team. His sixth season in charge of the Hokies said, this is the hardest working group, the best group he's ever coached here. Wants this group to get rewarded with a good crowd. Check that off. 
and with a good seed as Jones goes to work again. And now Virginia Tech needs to take a timeout because it has been all Wolfpack at the start. 10-1, NC State in the lead on the road in Blacksburg. NC State up nine here early in the first quarter. Kelly, you want to look back at this last play for NC State and, and show why this makes it so difficult for Virginia Tech. Yes, NC State has run this twice. So first of all, you have shooters on the wings, JBT and Crutchfield. King and Shepard can't help. Kunane goes and sets this pick. Let's roll this, guys. She's setting a ball screen for Kayla Jones. Watch Liz Kitley. It's Kunane. She can't help. Greg has to get under that screen and get to her spot and make Kayla Jones take a floater or a contested two. NC State has been running that to perfection. Well, I think we know what Kenny Brooks drew up in that timeout. He said, look, we got the ACC's all-time three-point leader. We have our all-time leading score. Let's get her the ball, shall we? And Aza Shepard hits a three. First field goal for the Hokies in the game. Canadian. It's always a good idea. In her range, too. Whew. It's always a good idea to get Asia Shepard the ball, Jen. But how about Elisa Kunain? We talked about how she's shooting the three ball. That's one of the differences between her and Kitley. Kitley just doesn't shoot the three. But Kunain has been shooting it well, and she can make about one of those a game, and it's really hard to guard. Yeah, 41% on the season, yeah, and yeah, there yeah, goes Kitley yeah. with the answer. Could watch these two play one on one all day. That was a strong move from Liz Kitley, keeping Kunane off balance using her pump face. Jones, beauty, nothing but net. Six points in the game for Kaylee Jones, and one away from a thousand in her career. Kayla Jones has made her mark on this game early. She is a fifth year senior. She came back to NC State with one goal in mind to win a championship and she is a very capable scorer and showing that so far. De'Asia Gregg, number 11, and off the bench for the Hokies, trying to get it inside to Kitley. No easy task. Brianna Perez, so quick with the ball in her hands, inside to Kinane, tough pass. Kitley going it alone, and Kinane adds another seven in the game now for Elisa Kinane. What a move from Elisa Kunane. She has come out of the gate hot. She has heard people, some pundits, perhaps she heard me, talking about Liz Kitley as the player of the year, and she doesn't want to hear that anymore, Jen. <laughs> hey, there's one way to prove it. Go head to head, show what you can do. And this is so physical inside. Before Kunane even got the ball, these two were battling. It was tough to get the ball into her. But guys, it is so difficult. Even when you're Kunane, you're 6'5", you're scoring around the outstretched arms of Liz Kitley at 6'6". You have to know exactly where you can get your shot off. And right now, it's, it's very early, Jen. We're six minutes in. But Kunane's winning this battle between these two so far. She did commit the foul that put Asia Shepard on the free throw line. That's the first personal against Elisa Kinane, just a second team foul for the Wolfpack. And Shepard very reliable from the free throw line. She has five. This is the second meeting of the season between these two teams. It's a very low scoring affair in Raleigh as Jones gets wide open in the paint and continues her good start, eight points. She goes over 1,000 in her career. But the score in that last one in January 23rd, 51-45. And even though NC State won it, as Kitley goes to work, it is tough to get anything in here other than the action. Let me just get back and focus, because back and forth they go. But it was not a very good offensive performance by either team in that game. Which is interesting, Jen, because you're right. That first game was pretty ugly. It was a pretty ugly offensive game. So far, this first quarter has been pretty from both of these teams. Of course, as I say that, just people are turning air balls. But overall, it has. And I think that the biggest issue for Virginia Tech so far is not necessarily their offense, but defensively. NC State is doing whatever they want. They are getting option one or option two in all of their sets. And the Hokies have to be able to buckle down and get some stops. Westmore's team. Nine for 11 so far in this game. Nine point lead. Crutchfield playing some tough defense. And that is certainly in the repertoire for Kitley. 
So Kunain can shoot the three, but I would say Kitley is a little more consistent from the mid-range. So these two, they're very similar, but they just have little de little details that are a bit different. And Kitley has been on fire with her mid-range game as of late. Lisa Kunain was the preseason ACC Player of the Year in the league. She goes to work again. Hard to stop. Nine points in the game for Kunain. Yeah, Kunain's having fun. She's having fun battling inside with Kitley, and that was a great pass from Kayla Jones to get the ball to Kanain exactly in her stride to score with the right hand. Now it's Kitley's turn. Her fadeaway rolls out. On the year, we showed you the numbers, Kitley's numbers. I don't think there's any question, are better overall than Kanain's, but she also plays a lot more minutes. You could say she has to do a lot more. She has had to all season long. Three-pointer bounces out. Crutchfield, best three-point shooter by percentage on this Wolfpack team. Amore off to the races. Had her shot blocked. Back and forth, up and down the court they go. Really good defense in transition. Westmore was a little worried about NC State getting back in transition balancing the need to offensive rebound, but also knowing the Hokies love to run. And NC State's done a good job in that facet so far. Kanane, the offensive rebound. She's now in double digits as the Wolfpack continue to just shoot the ball at a blistering pace so far in this game. Nearly Elisa 70%. Kanane, Jen, Elisa Kanane is sending a message. She is absolutely sending a message. This is one of the most determined starts that I have seen from Kunain in her career. She is in a in a take no prisoners mode. Liz Kitley's one of her best friends, but right now in between the lines, she is out for blood, Jen Hildreth. She is dominating right now. I, I, I see it, Kelly, I see it. And even though we know the type of person Kunain is, and Wes Moore told us earlier today, she doesn't care about the individual accolades. Maybe not, but I agree with you. She's coming out to make a statement tonight, and so far she's done just that. Final few seconds of our first quarter. The Wolfpack in the lead. Hokies have had a hard time getting their shots to fall, but our battle we promised between two ACC Player of the Year candidates has not disappointed. These two are flat out special. Kitley has seven points, doing her best to keep Virginia Tech in the game, but Elisa Kunain is dominating in Blacks Blacksburg so far. NC State special moment a week ago on their home floor, Reynolds Coliseum hoisting that ACC regular season trophy. They knew they won at least a share of the regular season title. They knew they locked up the number one seed due to their head-to-head -head tie break over Louisville. So yeah, Westmore got the water bath, got that all taken care of. They have a chance to win it outright. And look, we gotta go back now, 1990. Here's what was going on. The top song, Hold On by Wilson Phillips. Ghost was bringing the money into the box office. People were watching Cheers on TV and The Simpsons. And Gas, oh, can we bring that back, was $1.34. <laughs> so it has been a while since the Wolfpack tasted that regular season title in this conference. Jen, tell me more about 1990. Oh, seems like oh, a magical on. time. <laughs> you be quiet over there. <laughs> <laughs> NC State, of course, has won the tournament championship, ACC tournament championship the last two years, but that regular season title has been a long time coming, and they want to own it outright. They do that with a win tonight here at Virginia Tech. Greg's been shooting the ball a little bit better here as of late. Doesn't take too many threes. That was just her third make of the season. But you know what, Kelly? They needed somebody to get them going. Must needed uh, bucket right there for Greg. And, and notice, too, Virginia Tech is giving Kitley a break right now. NC State is giving Kunain a break with Camille Hobby inside. It feels like whichever coach sends their star to the table first, the other coach will send the other one because you don't want one on the floor without the other. Asia Shepard did hit a shot earlier. 
but the threes have been few and far between. The Hokies two for eight from distance. They're the top three-pointing three-point shooting team in the conference in terms of makes. Tomorrow, the Tournament of History of ACC Men's Basketball continues on ACC Network with Episode 7. That's 1984 to 89, 9 Eastern. That's followed by Episode 8, which is 1990 through 97. New episodes of the 10-part documentary available every Monday at 9 and 10 Eastern through March 7th. You can always watch past episodes on the app. So, Kelly, you can learn more about the ancient 90s if you choose to <laughs> watch the tournament. <laughs> I think I just might do that, Jen. Jada Boyd, what a luxury for NC State to bring her off the bench. She was the sixth woman of the year in the ACC last year. Super talented four player. Diamond Johnson also went off the bench. Perhaps a leading contender for sixth player of the year this year for the Wolfpack in the ACC. We'll talk awards a little later, but Diamond Johnson is the sixth woman, sixth player of the year. It's not even close. That was one of the easiest awards to award. The <laughs> other ones are difficult, and yeah. we're talking ACC Player of the Year when it comes down to Kanan and Kitley. That one is a lot more difficult, but Diamond Johnson, for sure, the sixth player of the year. Shepard just a little short. Kenny Brooks telling her what he wants from her is just always to be ready to shoot. She was ready. <laughs> Left it a little short on the front iron. I know Perez missed that shot, but that was a great pass by Diamond Johnson. She looked off the defender and passed it cross court. Hey, on a trailer with a bucket and a chance to go to the free throw line. That's getting this crowd fired up. They were ready. You said it earlier. They're ready to go. Kayana Trailer is a left-handed player, so she attacks right. Still able to finish with her left and get to the free throw line. She does a great job of getting to the free throw line. Is one of their more aggressive players in terms of getting to the rim. Camille Hobby committing the foul. Trailer transfer from Purdue. One of four 1,000 point scorers on this Virginia Tech team. So when Penny Brooks tells you this is a special group, he is not kidding as Johnson goes to work, tries to drive around. Kitley, one of the best shot blockers in the league. Kitley's in right now, Kunane is not. Keep an eye on what Westmore chooses to do. We've talked about this, Jen, that Kunane only plays 25 minutes a game. Kitley plays 33, but this game is still close. I think Westmore is trying to get Camille Hobby some run right now. Here is Hobby with the basketball. She has some fond memories, Javi, of the last time playing in this building. You and I were reminiscing about that three-pointer she hit to send it to overtime as Boyd adds a couple more. Uh, Virginia Tech wound up winning that game. So the last time NC State played here in Blacksburg, the Hokies pulled the upset. NC State ranked number two in the country at the time. Kitley from the free throw line is good. She now has nine to name with 11 to lead NC State. That's automatic. And Kunane, you can see on the top right of your screen, is heading to the scorer's table to sub in. That's probably the easiest look that Kitley's gotten all day. And of course, it was without Kunane on the floor. See if the Hokies try to take advantage of the absence of Kunane again. Kitley's got to get a touch. Kunane's not in there. Get her the basketball. She has it now, taking on Hobby. There was a foul on the floor before she had a chance to take the shot. Well, this is the second to last regular season game for Coach K right here, Duke and Pitt. It is only on ACC Network and the ESPN app. That's coming your way on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. The seventh ranked Blue Devils in the lead in the ACC squaring off against the Panthers. Our coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern. That was a second personal on Hobby on the play. 15 on the shot clock now. Kitley, as you said, does not choose to take those threes very often. And here is Kanane back in to defend. Eight to shoot. Amor will take it. Kitley. She and Kanane batting it around. Kitley would have grabbed that rebound over 
any other post player in the ACC, perhaps instead of, or without uh, Maya Dotson, not Maya Dotson, but because of her size, Kitley can grab that rebound over almost anyone, but not Kunane, because Kunane can match her size and matches her ability to high point the basketball. Kitley, the second leading scorer and rebounder in the ACC. She's first in field goal percentage. Johnson to Kinane. Too strong. Tried to go in and get her own rebound, and that will be the second personal against Elisa Kinane. And notice Asia Shepard. She knew right away. She was on the floor. She had just fallen down, and she was pointing at her teammates, pointing at the bench, saying, that's two. That's two on Elisa Kinane. That is a veteran, smart basketball player in Asia Shepard. And that will send Kinane right back to the bench. We'll see how that continues to play out. Another foul against the Wolfpack. Jakia Brown-Turner, the guilty party, her first. And Jen, this is huge. It, it can't be understated how big it is that Kunane is now on the bench. I don't think Westmore will play her for the rest of this half. He, he hopes not to. And let's see if Kitley can take advantage of it and go to work. It's a seven-point game. NC State is led by as many as 11. Make it a five-point game. There goes Kitley. One of my keys for NC State was you have to keep Kunane out of foul trouble. When you look at the games in which NC State has struggled, the Georgia loss comes to mind. Kunane was in foul trouble, and it makes a huge difference for this team. Bobby tried the three. Shepard has Kitley. Sends Johnson to the ground with a move, and then is fouled. And this is as fired up as I have seen Asia Shepard all season. She's a chance to pull the Hokies even closer. 429 left to go in the second quarter from Castle. It's her senior night. She's getting the crowd fired up, and she is one of the best three-point shooters in the history of this league. Most in ACC history in terms of three-point makes, 387, that is absurd. That's a crazy number. She's a great shooter, but overall she's a great player too. Can do everything else for this team and a better leader as well, Jim. And one of our record setters as we look back on this regular season in the ACC, Shepard, also the all-time leading scorer at Virginia Tech. You look at Maria Gakdang, what a season she has had with 63 blocks. That's a record in the single season at Boston College. The beast, Lorella Kubai. All-time leader in rebounds and games played. Kelsey Marshall's been knocking down those threes at Miami. And Elisa Kinane, we already told you, has the free throw record all-time. It's been great when she's gotten to the line in her career for the Wolfpack. Speaking of free throws, that's three for three now for Shepard in this game. And she stays perfect from the line and makes it a one-possession game. Credit Virginia Tech, when they got down early, a 10 to one start for NC State, they did not panic. Kenny Brooks never panics. You can pan over him to him during any point of the game and he looks calm, cool, and collected. And Virginia Tech took on that attitude as well. Big bucket there from Raina Perez, her first points of the game for NC State. Wolfpack had gone about two and a half minutes without a basket. There is Kitley. You said she loves that mid-range face-up, and Kenny Brooks telling us that is absolutely part of the plan to work that into how she gets her points tonight. And now, no Kanane on the floor, remember, with two fouls. And Jen, I think without Kanane on the floor, NC State has to start doubling Kitley. I don't think they have any other choice right now. You can see the numbers for those two players, Kitley and Kanane, already trying to put that first meeting of the regular season behind them. They pretty much just equaled out each other in that one. They both struggled. They were combined 5 for 29 for a total of 15 points. They've already eclipsed that in this game. 11 points for Kanane, 13 for Kitley. And we're not even at halftime yet. They've each put on a show. I would say the first quarter was the Kanane quarter. She had 11 points in that first quarter. Now she's in foul trouble, sitting on the bench with two personal fouls. And this second quarter has been the Kitley quarter. So I guess we'll see what happens for the rest of this quarter and then heading into the second half. 
Kitley, six points in this quarter, seven in the first. Diamond Johnson on the free throw line. She's two for two. Those are her first points in the game. Deasia Gregg back on the floor for the Hokies. It's Emily Lytle goes to the bench. King missed her last three-point attempt, but typically a very reliable three-point shooter for Virginia Tech. Boy, Johnson is speedy. Finds Hobby for two. Hobby is so solid. She has earned her minutes behind Kunane. She's one of the reasons why Kunane only plays 25 minutes a night because Camille Hobby has earned her time on the floor. Asia Shepard adding to that record setting three point total. She's at 389 now for her career, more than any other player in ACC history. Four point Wolfpack lead. Jen, she's going to get to 400 with the postseason. 400 threes is honestly one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. I just want to get that in there. That's insane. I don't care if she played five years. I know she had the extra year. 400 threes is just a different level. Kayla King wants to play. The Hokies were struggling from three to start this game. They were one for six in the first quarter. Now they're starting to come alive. The lead is one for the Wolfpack. This is why it's so hard to guard Virginia Tech. They have surrounded Liz Kitley, the most dominant player in the Camille ACC, Hobby. with shooters galore. But how about Camille Hobby on the other side, Jen? She's holding her own. Back-to-back -back buckets for Hobby. Try to quiet this Virginia Tech crowd. Greg, she'll try the three. Nobody really there to rebound for Virginia Tech. Well, part of that was, that was a great box out by Camille Hobby, keeping Liz Kitley off the glass. Jones going to work. Hey, Jones. Jones need, needs more touches in this time without Kunane. Every time, it feels like every time Jones has touched the ball, she has scored. She is, she's five for five from yep. the floor. <laughs> You're right. Kitley. Hobby she wants to shoot that face up. And instead, she travels. That defensive stop has the Wolfpack fired up. I want to remind you that Thursday at 10 Eastern, our Nothing But Net crew has you covered. They'll wrap up the ACC Women's Tournament second round matchups with highlights and full breakdowns of each game. Analysis and insight you can only get in one place right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. I know you're ready for Greensboro, Kelly. So ready, Jen. My bag's are already packed. <laughs> the second I need to get up there, I'm going to hit the road. It's going to be a great tournament. Crutchfield gets the roll, and the question is, we know NC State's going to be the one seed. Where is Virginia Tech going to be? How early are they going to play? The Hokies win this game tonight. They get a double bye. They finish in the top four. They lose. They drop out of the top four. North Carolina steps in to get the double bye. Kitley. Liz Kitley. NC State just played great defense for 25 seconds, and Liz Kitley just hit a ridiculous shot. That's what just Had happened been. on that play. Had been a 6-0 Wolfpack run. Five-point lead now. Johnson launches. A little over a second for the Hokies to work with, but an incredible first half. Third-ranked NC State has led by as many as 11, but the Hokies came roaring back into this one, Kelly, a five-point advantage right now for Westmore's team. Look, it's very telling for NC State. With Kunain in foul trouble, they still lead by five. I thought Camille Hobby played some great minutes inside with Kunain on the bench. Both of these teams have already set a record for ACC wins in a season, 16 for NC State, 13 for Virginia Tech. We'll see who picks up one more. Right now, it's a five-point game as we send you to Drew Carter and Muffet McGraw in the studio. All right, Jen, a complete 180 from the first meeting between Kitley and Kinane last time they met. They combined for 15 points. Tonight, Kitley's got 15 in the first half. Kinane has 11 of her own. Wolfpack lead the Hokies by five. 
on the road. I'm Drew Carter alongside the coach, Muffet McGraw. And coach, we love it in TV when we sell a story and then it comes to fruition. And it has been the battle of the bigs tonight in Blacksburg. Boy, it really has. I love the way NC State came out and said, you know what, we're going to establish Kunain early. They went right to her and she really responded. But I really thought Kayla Jones was a big factor on the NC, on the NC State side. Because what happened when Kunain got into foul trouble, able to get, go to work on her side, but they were able to maintain the lead. So NC State coming through with the bench, I thought that was the big difference. Kanain in foul trouble too with those two fouls didn't play the last five minutes and change of that first half and Kidley really took advantage. Does NC State have any answers for her when Kanain's not out there? I think they're going to have to look to double team. They're going to have to bring the double team, especially when she's taking those short dribbles. She dribbles a lot in the post. They're going to have to get that. But that turnaround jumper, the fadeaway, that is really hard to guard. You don't want to double team her that far from the basket. That's a shot they're going to have to give up. Looking like Dirk Nowitzki is wearing 33 in white for Virginia Tech. Yeah. What a first half. It's a five-point game. Can't wait for the second. Deja Kelly's their best player. She was off today. Couldn't make a shot, but everybody else stepped up. Carolina rolls. NC State trying to win as well. Elisa Kinane, a great first half. And as we take a look at the ACC Women's Hoops Tournament bracket entering tonight's matchup between NC State and Virginia Tech, the Wolfpack already locked in at number one. Virginia Tech with a win stays at number three and stays in that double by territory. If they lose, North Carolina moves to four and gets the double by. Notre Dame to three. A lot of ramifications in the second half of this one in Blacksburg where NC State leads Virginia Tech by five. It's going to be a ton of fun in Greensboro no matter what the seeds are. This is probably the best conference in college basketball. I can say that because we're on ACC Network. No one's going to get mad at me. Drew Carter back <laughs> with the former Notre Dame head coach Muffet McGraw. And coach, what are you expecting from Greensboro in the ACC tourney? Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. There's so many teams that have to get at least one win, some of them two. It's going to be really difficult. When you look at the top of the conference with Louisville and NC State, nobody wants to be on their side. Nobody wants to be in the 8-9 game. They don't want to be the 7 seed because then you're going to have to play one of those teams, and they're probably going to win because not just because they're more talented. They also have great depth. They really can't get into foul trouble because they have people coming in off the bench. So I think those teams are really dominated and separated themselves. But we have so many really good teams in this league and you just look at how the standings are changing night after night it's going to be a battle no matter what, who's playing who. It is going to be a blast we'll have our nothing but net crew live down there in Greensboro the tournament is finally here it is ACC tournament week and the final game of the regular season wraps up after this Liz Kitley, Elisa Kinane can't ask for anything better the second half from Blacksburg is right after this The lights are shining inside and out in Blacksburg tonight. 39-34, our score at halftime. Number three, NC State leading 23rd ranked Virginia Tech by five. Jen Hildreth, former Clemson Tiger, Kelly Gramlich. Kelly, this game so far, I think everything we thought it could be. It has lived up to the hype, and so have Kunane and Kitley. This battle has been incredibly fun to watch. Kitley has 15, Kunane has 11, was in that foul trouble in the second quarter. But it's, it, this is much watch TV watching these two battle it out. Yeah, and we're going to look at those two in just a moment. But is, is there anything else that you think is going to maybe be the X factor beyond those two that's going to make a difference here in the second half? Well, for NC State, I think you keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, if Kunain gets that third foul, that can be very detrimental for them. For Virginia Tech, they have to knock down a few more threes. That's how they're going to be able to win this game. They have to knock down a few more from beyond the, out, the arc and still get that ball inside to Kitley, possibly get that third foul on Kinane. Yeah, Virginia Tech just one for six from three in the first quarter, a little better, three for nine in the second. But let's get to this player of the year showdown because they have been going at each other from the beginning. That's the beauty of these two is they play the same position. So they're guarding each other throughout this game. So it's truly a battle of Kunane versus Kitley, especially on the block. Kunane has shown her range, knocking down that three ball. Kitley put on a clinic in the second quarter, but she did that mainly when Kunane was out of the game. So that's going to be a big factor in this second half if Kunane can stay on the floor. But these two, Jen, whew, they are worth the price of admission. 
no doubt, 55% shooting for NC State. And at the beginning there, it seemed like they just weren't going to miss at all. We're getting themselves really good looks. Have been dominant. 30 points in the paint in the first half is a pretty incredible number. And you would expect that Virginia Tech is going to pull this upset. They are going to have to improve upon that three-point number mm -hmm. that you see there. No doubt about it, Jen. They have to, I think, get into the double digit and three-point makes in this game. And if they do, Kelly, then they'll move out of that five slot where you see them right now. So this is, if our current result stands, how things would shake up for the ACC tournament next week. Now, what could change are spots three, four, and five. If Virginia Tech pulls the upset against NC State, they would move in to that top four, and North Carolina would move out. Notre Dame is going to be in the top four no matter what. So plenty to play for here because that is something Virginia Tech has never had since joining this conference. They joined in 2004. They have never had the ability to have a double bye, which I know you believe, Kelly, is crucial to giving yourself a chance to win that ACC championship. I do, and the numbers show it. Since this league expanded and they needed a double bye for the tournament, there has not been a team that has reached the final without a double bye. So that's very important if you want to truly have a chance to win the whole thing. Kayla King hit 1-3 in the first. Got an easy offensive rebound for herself right there. She'll take the two. Sometimes the shooter is the best one to go get that O board because they shot the ball. They know if it's long. They know if it's short. They've shot the ball so many times they know generally where some of their misses go. So great job by Kayla King. Brown Turner did well to keep that in. And then Crutchfield, nice little flare at the end for the finish. She has four. NC State has so much depth. They're starting five. You've got three super seniors. You've got Kunane and Brown Turner. And the three players they bring off the bench, Hobby, Boyd, and Johnson. Uh, uh, Diamond Johnson, obviously. <laughs> Your sixth all player three of the year. Them, <laughs> yes, all three of them could start anywhere else in the country. I firmly believe that. Maybe besides South Carolina, Stanford, those, those schools, Louisville. But those three are incredible ball players coming off the bench. Zada Baines had her first points. Here is Kanane going to work again over Kinley. Her first point since the first quarter. She had all 11 in the first 10 minutes. I love that they went right back to Kanane. She sat on the bench, perhaps got a little cold during that time, but they went right back to their bread and butter. A little soccer action there from Shepard. That's not allowed. She kicked it after she lost it. So that'll stop the clock and give NC State a chance to set with the inbounds. That's a heads up play. I'm not sure if Shepard did that on purpose, but when you kick the ball, they do have to blow the whistle and you can prevent, as long as they don't think you're doing it on purpose, you can prevent a fast break. Well, either way, <laughs> Pack still gets a good look. Jones now with a dozen. Does Asia Shepard need to assert herself a little more in this matchup? The fade away from Kitley. No, there's a foul. Let's see who it's against. Foul coming against Wolfpack. Kayla Jones, I believe, is the player. If it is, that'll be her second personal. Second inferior Hokie is number 11, Deasia Gregg. Gregg. Demo as a caller. Transfer from Gulf Coast State and Georgia Tech. Now in for the Hokies and Kitley on the line. She was one for two from the free throw line in the first half. At the first point of the game for the Hokies. Remember, it was a bit of a slow start, Kelly. You thought maybe Virginia Tech feeling this atmosphere a little bit. All that was on the line for them. It was 10 to 1 NC State to start. I thought they were feeling the pressure early, Jen. Sometimes you can feel more pressure at home, especially when you're having a crowd like this that is one of your biggest crowds all season, even though Virginia Tech has built this fan base over the year. But they did feel the pressure early. I think in the second half, they've settled in a little more. Asia Shepard certainly had her moments, 10 points for the Hokies all-time leading scorer. She drives it now, kicks it to King. Amor takes her shot off the front of the rim. Kanane down on the ground behind the play, now finally getting back 
into the offense. And a foul away from the basketball against Virginia Tech. Tomorrow, you can watch the tournament history of ACC men's basketball on ACC Network, episode 7 from 84 to 89. That's at 9 Eastern. Followed by episode 8. That's 1990 through 97. New episodes of the 10-part documentary available every Monday at 9 and 10 Eastern through March 7th. And you can always go back and watch anything you might have missed on the app. Another foul. Oh, they're calling it tight here. Let's see. Kitley picked up her first a moment ago. And now this one's against Kayla King. That's her second. Two somewhat ticky-tack fouls here. And Jakia Brown turned. That was right in front of the official. Sold it a bit. But the officials only called three fouls total on Virginia Tech in that first half. I noticed Wes Moore telling the officials, hey, maybe you should even this out a little bit. And it seems they're doing that. Brown Turner got her own rebound, put it back in. She has six. Crutchfield has done an excellent job on Georgia Amore tonight. She has struggled to get any good looks at the basket, and she's 0 for 5. Crutchfield is known as a lockdown defender, and she's showing that tonight. Great defender, great three-point shooter. Doesn't necessarily take a ton of them. She has 163 in her career. That does rank eighth all-time at NC State, but set a record last year, a single-season record, shooting 47%. Crowd loving it, and Amor making it count. Jen, did Georgia Amor hear me? She was 0 for 5. I said Crutchfield was doing a great job. And Amor with the nastiest crossover of the <laughs> evening right there to free herself up. Hey. Amor, the Aussie going to work Amor. again. Okay, Georgia Amor, I take it all back. I forget I said anything. This has been an impressive little five-point run from the Aussie. Two-point game now. NC State out in front. Reina Perez trying to quiet the crowd, not this time. Shepard rips down the rebound. Saw an opening, went through a lot of traffic, and it winds up going out of bounds off of Virginia Tech and Shepard. Look at this crossover, Jen. Look at the separation she gets from Kai Crutchfield, and then to knock it down, and then on this possession, the next possession, taking it to the rim. They need Georgia Amor to be in double figures. 41% three-point shooter. That's the best in the ACC. And then Elisa Kanane showing a rare bout of emotion on the play. Wow, this, this is a tough one. You could make the argument this was an over the back. Let's take another look at it. Whew, that, that's tough because Kunain got so much higher than Kitley. So she was able to pinpoint the ball and grabbed it before Kitley really had position. So I think that's what the officials are thinking. That could have gone either way, but look, Kunain will take it, a three-point play. And I love how aggressive she's being attacking that offensive glass. And now it is two fouls on Kitley. So Kitley has two, Kunain has two. And you know that those two are not done going at each other yet, not by a long shot. Here's Kayana Trailer back to Amor. Crutchfield does not want to fall for that crossover again, you can tell. <laughs> Greg with the two. What a game, Jim. What a game so far. NC State playing for that outright regular season title. Virginia Tech playing for the double bye in the ACC tournament, and maybe more. Who knows what that could mean NCAA tournament implication-wise. Shepard slicing through the defense, but what hands by Perez to take it away. Perez so quick, so quick getting her hands on the ball. This game has everything. Everybody's <laughs> diving on the floor. This time it is Amor. Her Virginia Tech Hokies have never led. They're within three right now of the third ranked team in the country. 
And it's hard to believe the Coach K era about to come to an end at Duke. He's had the Cameron Crazies on his side. And at Virginia Tech, they're, they're quiet now. They're catching their breath, Kelly. But this crowd has been going bonkers in this game for Virginia Tech. The Hokies trying to pull the upset as they did last year when NC State came to town. Going to stay on this end of the floor. I think Virginia Tech thought that that ball was off NC State. You could tell quite a few white jerseys did not go after it. So NC State getting another possession here. Raina Perez trying to make the most of it. Her three-point attempt is off the mark. And Jen, you mentioned the fans. We're talking about Coach K and the fans. These Virginia Tech fans, we've done a few Virginia Tech games this year. They have stepped up. And you can hear the Let's Go Hokies chants. They are starting to draw a good amount of fans, and it's helped this team have a great home court. Virginia Tech is undefeated at home in ACC play so far this season. Amor driving the baseline, the reverse. She had it. Just couldn't finish. The Hokies 8-0 at home in ACC play. The last time they had a perfect home record in conference play it was a 98-99 season when they were in the Metro Conference. <laughs> Johnson. Eight to shoot for the Wolfpack. Perez spinning toward the basket. Gets the Raina finish with Perez. the left hand. Reina Perez just so underrated with that finish. And then how about this? Kai Crutchfield getting up and pressuring the ball. And they're saying this is off Virginia Tech. So let's watch after the play. Well, they can't review it because we're not under two minutes. So you can't review right. a play like that at this point. But that was an interesting, interesting call there. So the Wolfpack get it back and get the bucket from Johnson. There's a four-point swing. You had the Georgia Amor miss layup, and then you had that play. Or sorry, six-point swing, because you had the Reina Perez bucket, and then that two. The Hokies had gotten it within three. Now they turn it over and then commit the foul. Kayana Trailer reaching out. Shepard back in the game. Also Kenny Brooks has been so open about talking about the conversations he's had throughout Asia Shepard's career and even admitted in the last game, which was a win against Miami for the Hokies, that he and Asia got into it a little bit during the game and said, you know what, though? She was the adult. I got a little fired up and heated and said, fine, just keep doing what you're doing then. And she came back and said, no, coach, you're right. Let me fix this. And she did. And it was really key for them getting the win. She made some big shots in that Miami game, but NC State, their depth, it continues to show through. As I've said, to bring Jada Boyd off the bench, who I think is one of the more talented four players in this league and is obviously going to have a much bigger role next year when all of these fifth-year seniors leave, but she has given them some great minutes off the bench. NC State team, high aspirations for this group. They already know they're the number one seed in the ACC tournament. The regular season champs, at least a share of it. And great resilience from Trailer to just stay with it. Hard fought two points. How far will well, this NC State team go? Sorry about that, Jen. Especially after the previous possession where she had the turnover and the foul. So a good job of keeping her head in the game. Duke and Coach K set to have their last regular season game, their second to last, excuse me, only on ACC Network on Tuesday. You know who the last one is against. That would be North Carolina. But Duke and Pittsburgh coming your way Tuesday on ACCN. Our coverage beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern for that one. Shepard driving, had it blocked. Jada Casual block Boyd. by Boyd. Goodness gracious, Jada Boyd. And then Shepard picked the pocket. I think it's fair to say that from behind Johnson. Now she's out on the break. 
because of that Jada Boy block, that's one of the many reasons why Shepard passed that ball out. She was thinking about how she just had her, her shot swatted to Roanoke on the previous possession. Trailer with the drive. She is fouled. And this is what I mean, sending that ball to another area coach, Jada Boyd. Making it look easy, and that's all ball. All ball for Jada Boyd. Trailer on the line, and interestingly, Kelly, no field goal attempts this quarter for Kitley and Virginia Tech. That's got to be something you think Kenny Brooks is going to need to correct as they move forward. Well, I think part of that, Jen, Virginia Tech's been playing very fast. This has been an up and down third quarter. So they haven't gotten the ball to Kitley as much in the half court. Now, kunane has been pretty quiet in this quarter, too. So it hasn't hurt them as much as you think. Five points for Kunane. Kitley has two, both of those coming from the free throw line. Five points are deficit as it was at halftime in the game. Crutchfield for Kanane and the tap by Amor. There is a foul against Virginia Tech. Kitley has two in the game. Let's see who they whistle for this one. It is on Kitley, it's her third. That's big. And Georgia Amor did all she could. This was a great strip, but Kunane, with the presence of mind, finds a way to get that ball back. And at this point, who really cares? The free throws are important, sure, but the third foul on Kitley is big. Pick your ACC player of the year. Is it the best player on the best team in the league, NC State's Elisa Kunane, or is it Liz Kitley, who has incredible numbers Top two in the league in scoring and rebounding first and field goal percentage, but now in some foul trouble. It's one of those debates that we have often, Jim. Is it the best player on the best team? Is it the, the most outstanding player, the most dominant when you look at the numbers? The other factor here is that Kunane only plays 25 minutes a game. So that adds to her lack of numbers as well. Johnson missed everything, but boy, cleaned it up. Right before the buzzer to end the third quarter. And the Wolfpack staying out in front. Virginia Tech got it within three in the third quarter, but NC State trying to hang on, get one more ACC win, claim that regular season title outright. Which team, which player is going to get you that March Madness moment this year? We are getting ever closer. Let's take a look at our most recent bracketology with Charlie Cream and who he's got in from the ACC. A lot of teams can make their case here. And Kelly, I know Boston College, one of those teams that you think has been pretty impressive here down the stretch. I think Boston College is a tournament team. Now their non-conference is not much to write home about, but what they've done in the ACC winning 10 games, beating Notre Dame, and the way they've dominated as of late, I think they're in. We'll see if my friend Charlie Cream is listening to me in the committee, but I think they're in. Another basket for Jada Boyd. She has 10 now for the Wolfpack. And you talk so much about the depth of this NC State team, Kelly. Of course we're talking a lot about Kanane. You're going to. She's the preseason ACC Player of the Year. It's an All-American last year, ACC Tournament MVP. But then there are so many other terrific players around her. There are, and I think Jada Boyd's been the X Factor tonight. Kitley and Shepard in double figures for Virginia Tech. Jones and Kunane for NC State, and now Boyd. And her 11 points off the bench, plus what she's done defensively, to me, she's the difference right now. Shepard with the dish to Baines. The Hokies are hanging around you, and they have to get some stops, but I think they have to knock down multiple threes in these final nine minutes. That, that's the only way for me, pairing that with some defensive stops. That's the way Virginia Tech finds a way to win this game. Virginia Tech, number one in the ACC in three-pointers made, number two in three-point percentage. Team ahead of them, the Wolfpack. But in conference play, Hokies the best by percentage when it comes to three. And Shepard wanted that connection that worked out so well the last time. She went back to Baines, but the Wolfpack ready for it. 
tie him up and possession arrow in favor of NC State. Asia Shepard's got to keep that basketball. First of all, Jada Boyd is one of the best hedge and recover players in the ACC. Did a great job of being ready for that, but Asia Shepard going to her right needs to keep that ball, pull up, or take it to the rim. Now remember, Kitley has three fouls, make it four. This is huge. One thing Kunane does so well, and Kitley has a tendency at times to settle more for the jumper. Kunane is going to attack you. She's going to make a quick move, use one or two dribbles, and go to the rim. She's going to force the officials to make a call, to make a decision. And Kitley, obviously frustrated, thought she had her hands up. There was some contact between Kitley's left arm and Kunane. I think that's a good foul, but that's the pressure Kunane puts on a defender because she's so quick to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. 19 points in the game for Kunane. Now 20, and she adds to that career free throw record at NC State. Amor, once again, showing off that crossover and the space it can create. Kanane, they're going to her again. This time it's Greg who commits the foul. Lisa Kanane right now, Kelly, just saying, I'm going to try to make you stop me without fouling, whoever you are. Guys, this is so special. This is so special from Kunane and Diamond Johnson. Kunane made eye contact with her, turned her head back. They made eye contact, and Diamond Johnson threading the needle like a quarterback hitting his slot receiver. Whew. You should not be able to run the floor at 6'5", like Elisa <laughs> Kinane does. Well, that's why she's one of the best, not only in this league, but in the country. But wow. missed both those free throws. Had a chance to give NC State their biggest lead of the game. Instead, it stays at 10. And now Boyd is called for the foul for NC State. That's the first team foul against the Wolfpack in this quarter. Three already for Virginia Tech. Janane is one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC and definitely one of the best post player free throw shooters in the country. So to go over from the line, that's very rare from Elisa Kunane. So Kitley on the bench with four fouls. Wolfpack looking to extend their lead. Boyd so calm and composed. Baines did enough defensively. And where has Asia Shepard gone? No points for the Hokies all-time leading scorer in the second half. Can she change that now? She does! Asia right on cue, and she knew that her team needed her right there. Big three from Asia Shepard to cut into this lead late in the fourth. with Liz Kelly on the bench with four fouls now more than ever. It is Asia Shepard time, and Kelly, she hits a three, her first point since the second quarter. And you can see that sigh of relief, that focused look on her face. And Jen, there are many rules in life, right? But one of the main rules, guys, is you can't go under the screen on Asia Shepard. She is gonna <laughs> hit a three ball in your face. And that's what she did, keeping Virginia Tech in this game as Kitley sits on the bench with four fouls. Wes Moore said this game could very well come down to who makes their threes. Yes, you've got that big battle in the paint that we've been talking about all night long with Kunane and Kitley. Here's Kunane going to work on Baines with Kitley on the bench. But both of these teams have shooters, good shooters from the perimeter. And Virginia Tech probably needing to hit a few more than they have so far. They're six for 20 from three. NC State hasn't taken that many, just one for eight. I stand by what I said at halftime. I think they have to get to double digit made threes if they're gonna win this game. They're at six right now, as you said, Jen. On that previous play, they helped down, two different Virginia Tech players helped down. They effectively tripled Kunane. Because Kitley's not out there, they're going to have to help off, and that's where NC State shooters could come into play.
Kinane. Offensive foul, Z Kintner right on the baseline, ready with the call. That is three now on Kinane. And a great job by DeAsia Gregg taking the charge. Does a great job of selling it, and they're, what they're really calling is Kinane lowering that shoulder right into Gregg, and Gregg sold it right in front of D. Kintner. Shepard wants another. Rebound there for the taking. It'll go to the Wolf Pack. That was an area of focus for this team, has been really the last few weeks, an area that Westmore feels his team needs to get a bit better at. And Greg drew enough contact again, no whistle, but it does result in a turnover. Kelly Amor got all the way to the basket and still tried to pass it. Maybe it would have been better off to take her own shot there. Virginia, or Georgia Amor had a good look at the basket. That time she was just overpassing. And look, we've seen this with NC State and Virginia Tech, two, the two best three-point shooting teams in the ACC. And both struggling a bit today from beyond the arc. So initially, the officials, one of them pointed the way of NC State. Crowd went nuts. They can't review this, but they can talk amongst themselves and make sure they get whoever had the best look at it. To That's make the call. Off Diamond Johnson. It is. Our crowd in Castle Coliseum made sure that they were very aware of that on the floor. <laughs> That's what your home crowd is supposed to do, Jen. Just keep Helping chatting out. with those officials every once in a while. Shepard, another miss. Greg playing some big minutes here with Kitley on the bench. That's foul number four on today. Today's Greg has been instrumental in these last couple of minutes. Great job by her to grab that offensive rebound. And now Kunain has four fouls. So she got the third foul on Kunain. She just got the fourth foul on Kunain. She has been so far in, in these first four and a half minutes of this fourth quarter the most valuable Hokie with what she's done on both ends of the floor. You talk about X Factor, essentially other players stepping up, someone beyond the big names and the matchups that we're all going to talk about. I think you're spot on, Greg. What a key moment in the game. So now with five and a half left, Kinane goes to the bench. And we'll watch how these two coaches play it. When, Kelly, will they decide to bring their Player of the Year candidates back on the floor? This is the game within the game. It's going to be a fascinating decision. I know for sure, Jen, you won't see either of these players before the next media. Now, if that media gets down to the two-minute mark, then that's different. But the next dead ball under the five-minute mark will be a media. You won't see either of them at least before then, I don't think. Certainly the onus on Kenny Brooks and Virginia Tech if his team continues to trail to probably have to put Kitley back in there. They're down five at the moment. Shepard has Amor to her right, finds her in the corner. Boyd and Hobby defending, but then they left Amor. And Crutchfield, all 5'9 of her, and I think that's generous with the bun on her head, grabs the rebound. That's a bun height, Jen. That's definitely a height plus bun. <laughs> Brown Turner to the basket is fouled. So we've been talking all night long about which player from these respective teams will win ACC Player of the Year. Is it Kitley? Is it Kane? We'll talk more about it when we come back. Two childhood friends from Summerfield, North Carolina, battling it out, facing off tonight with Player of the Year dangling in the balance. Those are the numbers for Kunane and Kitley throughout the regular season. But Kelly, I know you also wanted to do a little math and see what their numbers were when you looked at it per 40 minutes. Yeah, shout out to her hoop stats who has all these advanced stats. So they put these numbers, but then they do a formula to see what they would do per 40 minutes. And per 40 minutes, it's very, very similar. Kune or Kitley leading in the block category, but we've talked about it. Kunane plays 25 minutes a night. Kitley plays 33. That's because the Hokies, even though they have blown out a lot of teams, they generally need Kitley to play later in games and more fourth quarters. And NC State has Camille Hobby as well. So both of these players, whoever wins the ACC Player of the Year, it's going to be one of these two, will be very, very deserving. Jeff. 
Both of them on the bench at the moment with four fouls. 20 points in the game for Kinane, 17 for Kitley. Her team trailing NC State by six now with 4.24 to go. Amor into Greg, who once again draws a foul. This will be the fourth team foul on the Wolf Pack. So both teams will be in the bonus with their next foul committed. And let's welcome Kitley back into the game. So Kenny Brooks is ready to roll the dice. And we'll see what Wes Moore does. The chess match continues between these two head coaches. Kayla King, by the way, also has four fouls for Virginia Tech. So something to keep an eye on. One of the Hokies' best shooters, one of the best high percentage in the ACC from three. Here is Kitley. Five on the shot clock. Hobby doing a tremendous job defensively. Kitley forced to fade away. Off balance. Great defense. Great defense from Camille Hobby. She knows that Kitley wants to face up and pull it. And Hobby's doing a great job of not letting her get that shot off and being so up in her grill that she feels like she can't put the ball on the floor either. So we had a Jakia Brown Turner free throw, but neither team with a made field goal in over three minutes. Shepard. This again, again both hit a big three, have, but They've just really locked in defensively. I, I, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily taking bad shots. It just feels like the intensity of the moment, both of these teams are playing really good defense in that stretch where they've each struggled to, to score the ball. Wolfpack, the heavy advantage in the all-time series, 24 to two as the officials not buying any sort of a foul on that play, but then surprisingly, Jones didn't make the wide open layup. Might have been too open when she turned around. But the last game here, absolutely unforgettable. Went to overtime. Camille Hobby, who just committed that foul for NC State, hit the three to send it to overtime. And then Virginia Tech set an NCAA record with 26 points in overtime. Asia Shepard had 18 of them as they pulled off the upset. First time ever that they got a win against the top four team. Kanane and back look on who the floor is, now Jen. as well. She's back. Coach K's final game at Cameron Indoor is Saturday. ACC Network will be there with a unique and exclusive look at this historic game against the Tar Heels. Our coverage begins at 4.30 Eastern from Duke with a nothing but net pregame show. And at 6, get an alternate view of the game inside Cameron as well as a Coach K camp. So lots going on there as well as our coverage in addition to ESPN's game telecast on Saturday. One for two from the free throw line for Kitley. Still no field goals in the second half for Kitley. And what a play by Emily Lytle. Takes it away. She's a little off balance. And then they're going to say Reina Perez had it, was out of bounds. And so it'll be Virginia Tech basketball. You can tell how much each of these teams wants this game. Look at the hustle between Lytle and Reina Perez continuing to go at it. The only reason we have a whistle is because Reina Perez was lying on the baseline when she recovered that basketball. Once again, five point deficit for Virginia Tech. The Hokies have never led in this game tonight. They got it to within three the last quarter. And NC State has just held strong. Amor wants Shepard for three. Around and in this time for Shepard. What a pass by Georgia Amor. She's always looking for her senior. She's always looking for Shep. Shep stepped into that shot and made, I would say, one of the bigger threes of her career. Perez, boy, had a chance to silence everybody. Instead, it's a chance for Shepard and the Hokies to take the lead. The drive to the basket by Amor, and we're tied. Shep returns the favor, could have pulled up, but hit Georgia Amor, who takes it all the way to the rim. We are in for an amazing finish here in Blacksburg.
What will the final minute have in store? NC State playing for that outright regular season title. Virginia Tech playing for history. Their first ever double bye in the ACC tournament. Kanane, Kitley cannot foul. Kanane knows it. What a move. What a move by Elisa Kunane. Fake right, went to her baby hook, which Westmore loves, and silences the crowd a little bit here in Castle. 22 points for Elisa Kunane. Ball on the floor. Plenty of timeouts left for NC State in particular, all of them. Two for Virginia Tech. And there is a 30 second timeout on the floor. Quick break for us as well. Don't go anywhere. 24.1 to play a two point game. Both teams in their huddles. You get a look at what they've got remaining. Three timeouts left for NC State, two for Virginia Tech. Both teams in the bonus with the next foul. So free throws coming. And Kelly, I have to assume Virginia Tech right now down two. Gonna play this out, right? There's a little bit of a difference between shot clock and game clock, although we know our officials are looking at the clock at the moment. So we're gonna see exactly what happens there. So game clock now to 25.6, 16 on the shot clock, 17. <laughs> I think you play this out if you're Virginia Tech, especially because NC State has so many good free throw shooters. And with the five that Westmore's putting on the floor right now, all very, very capable free throw shooters. You can get a stop here and you'll have plenty of time to go score. You can call timeout and advance the ball. So I say play it out. Just eight points for NC State in this fourth quarter. 15 for Virginia Tech as they've made this a two point game. Where else would they go? Kanane had it. Affected at least by Kitley. Now timeout. Virginia Tech can advance the basketball. Here we go. 12.4. Timeout, Virginia Tech. What a defensive stop here. Kitley's playing with four fouls. She does a good job That's of contesting that. That probably could have been called a foul, Jen. I think there was a little contact, but it was minimal. They let it go. And now Virginia Tech has a chance to either tie or take the lead. All right, Kelly, what are they talking about? Kenny Brooks is coming over to that huddle. They're down two. Kitley, by the way, has not made a field goal since the first half. This is an interesting situation for Kenny Brooks because Asia Shepard has shot the ball well in this second half. She's your all-time leading scorer. She's your fifth-year senior. Kitley, though, is perhaps the best player in the league, but you're right, she's had a little bit of a slower second half. I would say, now I'm not paid to coach, Jen, okay? So let's be clear. I think you put the ball in the hands of Asia Shepard, see if you can get her a look, and you send Kitley to the glass. That's what I would do in this situation. But look, Kenny Brooks, much more qualified than me. 18 points, seven rebounds in the game for Kitley. Shepard with 16 and six rebounds of her own. Elisa Kinane leading all scorers with 22 points for NC State. And keep in mind, Kunane has that fourth foul, as does Kitley. So that's one reason why you may want to go into Kitley, just because you're, oh, Kunane. Let's see, that's I believe Kunane is on the bench. Okay, yeah. there you go. That, that's a smart move by Wes Moore then. Well, Camille Hobby has played some great defense when Kunane has gone to the bench. Shepard gets the ball. Under 10 to play. Asia Shepard steps back. Contested three. Misses. There is Kitley trying to get the rebound. She couldn't. Ball still on the floor. And that's it. Virginia wow. Tech took their shot. Kitley was there for the rebound, was maybe a fingertip away. And NC State escapes with a two point win. So they did what I suggested, but it didn't work, Jen. So there you go. I mean, look, Asia Shepard got a good look. That was a tough shot, though. She pump faked and had to alter her shot in the air. It was great defense by Kayla Jones. And Kayla Jones really altered that look for Asia Shepard. You also had Jakia Brown Turner guarding Kitley. So in hindsight, you may have wanted to attack that. But in the end, you got your all-time leading scorer 
a good look from three. That's what you're supposed to do as a coach. Oh, there's so much respect. You could probably see it right there between Westmore and Kenny Brooks for these two programs. And Virginia Tech now is going to have to play an extra game in that ACC tournament. They will drop out of the top four. They don't get the double by. North Carolina celebrating right now in Chapel Hill. The Tar Heels get the double by as Virginia Tech falls to the five seed and NC State now the outright ACC regular season champs. Jen, I just want to give a shout out to the Virginia Tech fans who have really started to embrace this program. It's great to see if you win, if you build it, they will come. That is being shown in Castle Coliseum tonight. And I would say this is one of the best regular season games that we saw all season. So shout out to both of these teams. What a way to finish the regular season. And let's do it again in Greensboro. Can't wait for the ACC tournament. It is coming right up next week. The NC State Wolfpack, your ACC regular season champs for the first time since 1990. But this Virginia Tech Hokie team gave them a run in their final game at Castle Coliseum in the regular season. Final score 68-66 in favor of NC State. For Kelly Gramlich, I'm Jen Hildreth saying so long from Blacksburg.